Well, hello again. Um, some of you already know that I'm reporting back to you periodically on my own process or journey. And you may or may not know that the journey is scripted to be three years. And there's a reason for that number. But also, what I'm going through is, just so you understand the principles in it, I'm going through the family tree. Now, to me, this is a model of a family tree. The triangles are father and mother, and the other triangles are grandfathers on both sides of the family. They're circles. Those are my mother and grandmothers. This is essentially a genetic composition. And in this work, the organizational pattern looks like this when it is incorporating a year. So if you could just see the colors, for example, there is a sequence of colors that correspond to the colors in the family tree. So in this work of cycles and seasons, I'm taking one month at a time to focus on one grandparent. And we're following a specific order that goes from autumn to autumn. So basically, the journey starts on the first month of autumn. So if I just do this in a different way without that curvy line, let me just make a straight line. And it, these are, if you will, my genetic ancestors within three generations, my grandparents and great grandparents, all laid out on somewhat of a color chart map. Right here at the red and blue, this is all of my mother's family. Right here at the beginning of the red is all of my father's family. The goal is, is to take one month to spend time with in feeling or understanding a specific grandmother in the family tree, starting with the three grandmothers on my mother's side, and then progressing on to their husbands and so on and so on. This is what I'm doing. I'm letting you know it's an experiment. And you're welcome to come along, as some of you I know already are. But I have noticed that I need to pause again and, well, give you a little bit of a caveat, uh, a little bit of a warning. Now, the, there's some good news and some bad news. And the good news is, well, I'm pretty sure it's working. Well, the bad news is, um, I'm pretty sure it's working. By that, I mean, yes, I think that the regular periodic experience of feeling for 15 seconds a particular grandmother periodically throughout the times of the day, it's working. And then combining that grandmother with the next grandmother and the third grandmother as a season, and then combining that to the next season of autumn and winter going into summer, yes, I, I think it's working. What does it mean it works? Well, I think I'm bringing my attention and feeling and desire to want to grow into the first one, which is primarily an attribute of feeling in the family tree. These are designed as glands, organs, and body systems, but they're also sequences that lead one to the other. Now, these sequences that lead one to the other, that passes all the way through here. For example, 
This same pattern that is the mother and father's family, as I mentioned before, this is the equinox. Now, at the equinox, this is when the entirety of the mother's family now touches upon the father's family. And by the way, all of these are people, actual living people, and they have feelings and they have history. Now, when I say they're actually living people, I do not consider death as an ending. I consider all of these grandparents at some form or another to actually be living somewhere in the spirit world. And whatever their experiences were, remembered and genetically transferred down to me, it becomes my responsibility to open this Pandora's box of feelings up and decide which one of these feelings are mine or not mine, which one I want to keep, which one I don't want to keep. And my basic rule is, does this memory feel loving? Then I want to keep it. Does this feeling feel unloving? Then I choose not to keep it. Now, I'll explain later about what that means to feel a feeling and let it go or how to discover a feeling, but this is what I'm doing. I'm spending time with each one of these grandparents intentionally with a sincere desire to want to feel what they contributed to my current experience, be it physically, emotional, spiritually, or otherwise. I want to know, bring some attention to, some purpose to, what they have given to me. So inside of this sometimes Pandora's box, it's my responsibility to open this up, discover what's inside, and systematically either decide to utilize it in some form, keep it, and or to disregard, send it back. And oh, by the way, there's a lot more than I thought but I am discovering that the sincere desire to want to bring attention, feeling, and purpose to a specific grandparent, for me, has a positive benefit. Part of that positive benefit is that there is a systematic sequence of feelings that start to arrive. They're always there somewhere held within me, but by going to that grandparent in sequence, it presents it. So I'm finding that there are feelings inside me that I didn't know existed, but by focusing on a specific grandmother, for example, like mother's mother's mother, I never met her, my grandmother barely knew her because my great-grandmother died when she was quite young, I think like 12 years old. And then my mother you know, lost her own mother when she was five. My mother has memories of her own mother. So there's a whole series of painful relationship patterns of loss and pain and you name it. My mother's family is, well, like yours, probably not all easy. My father's family is even worse. So the, the challenge is if I go and I want to feel the emotional contribution from my mother's mother's mother, then over a period of time, there are things that start to arrive. And you might ask why. Would you go to a dark closet that's not been opened and open it up and have a desire to want to feel the pain and suffering of a great grandmother who did not get to be with her daughter and so on and so on? Well, for me, the, the path I'm choosing is to intentionally want to feel everything that's inside me no matter where it came from. 
Now, for me, the family tree, which corresponds to all these colors, made contributions inside of me, the vast majority of which don't necessarily materialize in my life, but are oftentimes genetically transferred to one of my children or grandchildren, and I'm the recipient and the sender of unresolved emotional strata, I don't want to do that to my grandchildren, great-grandchildren, I would like to send to future generations as much as possible a clean slate. That's why I'm doing it. And also the recognition that each one of these, not clearly demonstrated, has to do with one of my chakra systems and my glands and organs. This is all of me learning to feel, experience, and embody my own right to exist as me. By that, I am appreciative that my ancestors have contributed to me, and I'm willing to receive the beauty and the loving gifts of what they've manifested. But I no longer am willing to receive or accept or have to embody the pain of the unloving things that they did by intention or ignorance, alcohol addiction, smoking addictions, sex addictions, whatever the problem was, I'm willing to take my time and feel each one of them. Take a month. Divide that month up into four parts and do that. During that month, I'm willing to take the individual hours of the day and feel that hour of the day as it relates to that one particular grandmother or grandfather. So for example, now I'm 10 months into this experiment. I've gone through the three grandmothers of the autumn. I'm not done with them, just started. I've gone through the three grandfathers also on my mother's side. So I've gone through all of the grandparents on my mother's side at least once. I intend to do it three times. And now I'm into the fourth month of my father's family. Who? it's not been easy. Now, what I mean by that is that what I notice is that each time I go into a place, like, for example, this purple color here corresponds to my father's mother's father. Now, that corresponds in a numbering system to the head. So the head is a six, the throat's a five, and the chest is a four, and so on. There are numbers up here. So I went through the purple one, number six. I had some very personal experiences that I won't go into great detail to explain, but they were meaningful. Now, without really seeing the graphic, and let me go back to show you that graphic just one more time, another way of, of seeing this. In this graphic, this is my father, my father's mother. That father's mother we call number one girl. And the rest of them, there are six women in total. And then her father is what we call number six boy. So my great grandfather's daughter is a specific part of my body and ruled by a specific part of my brain. And the two of them are supposed to work in cooperation. Well, that didn't necessarily happen. When I get the history of my father's family, there was a tragic and very difficult relationship between my great grandfather and his daughter and a tragic and painful relationship between my father's mother and my father. So as I'm going through my father's side of the family, there's some uncomfortable heaviness, pain, social, physical doubt. And, and then the way it's activated sometimes is somebody comes. People come to the door, literally, 
and there are surprising social moments, either I choose something on the, on the entertainment system that exactly matches the feeling of something. So I'm having a whole cascade of feelings on this month. Now back to the other one. Let me go to a slightly different one for a moment. Here's another way of looking at the same thing, right? So this is the same sequence as before, all of the colors the same. And this is the dark area's mother's family and the light area's father's family. And this is father's father and this is father's father's father, number four. And this is the great grandfather at the pinnacle of this. This is my father's mother's father. I know there's lots of numbers and names, but I'm suggesting to you that there is an actual benefit to seeing these people as alive. And there's an actual benefit to the recognition that they did contribute something to you. I'm not asking you or suggesting to you, and I don't, by the way, engage in directed communication with them other than periodically to say thank you. But now it's my job, not their job, to deal with the feelings inside me. No matter how they got there, I'm the one responsible for them. Now, the problem is if I don't resolve these feelings in some healthy, loving way, they will by necessity find a way to bring physical, social symptoms of that unresolved emotion. So, what I've decided to do is to go to each one. So this month is in the Northern Hemisphere what's called the number one girl month. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's the number one boy month. And you'll find it's always mirrored wherever I am. They're, they're in the, the same neck. And there's a sequence to this. And it's really quite profoundly beautiful. But there's also something very interesting about this month because not only is it three sets of three months, nine months, a symbol of birth in some form or another physically, but if you look at this map, you realize it's six months in a row of a masculine progression. By that I mean the winter of the ascending light started with one grandfather. That corresponds to the grandfather of the lungs, by the way. And then the next one, the grandfather of the pancreas, grandfather of the throat, parathyroid function. These are three grandfathers from the mother's family that merge with three grandfathers from the father's family. So you have six months in a row of male ascending force that is designed to give birth to or manifestation to the great grandmother that corresponds to my bones, cognitive memory, and my will, and a few other very important things. Now, when I got to this one, I was not expecting what I found there that I really want to pass on to you for you to consider the number one girl is, and you'll see them everywhere. They have classic ways that they use their food and their will and their words to communicate and deal with family. Their life is usually family, family, family. Everything for them is family, family first in some form or another. But what I find about this is that this is designed for me to have the opportunity to be a distinct incarnated being with my distinctive individuality. Well, what I mean by that is this is about me having the opportunity to come into the material world and manifest life from the orientation of my own free will. I know that sounds natural, but it really isn't because we are merging into a composition of ancestors 
and she has the memory. So somehow in my bone level or crystalline nature of my own genetic code, because you probably already know that the gene code are actually crystals, I mean literally protein crystals in the epigenetics, but also molecular crystals biochemically, and so on and so on. This is a long-term memory of all of the memories of this entire family tree. Somehow in the middle of this, I'm supposed to be able to identify and to feel me. And the reality is, is I can't. I mean, if I sit with it, and I am, I sit with it hours, there is such of an overlay of powerful social feeling memories that it's very difficult for me to just identify the essential essence of my own right to be me, unencumbered by all of them. I can't do it. I can get to the horizon of it, but I can't get to it. I can theoretically see it. I can even, at another level, see it happening, but I can't get it because of the magnitude of the pain on this level is like parking a big truck on my head. It's not an easy feeling. And there's a whole series of other social events that come by just to remind me what it feels like to exist. Huh. I'm still dealing with it. I'm very much involved in it, but I'm also really excited because I can feel how the accumulation of all the ones that have come before is helping me to move the dross of this. I'm saying that the learning of an implement like the protocol, and for those of you who don't remember, the protocol is a specific method by which I experience feelings inside me. I won't go it in great detail, but let me briefly just go there for a moment. It has to do with imagining or building the understanding that I have three dimensions around me all the time. Self, others, and all. Well, three diameters. One of those diameters happens to be the diameter of self. The second diameter is the diameter of the inclusiveness of the beginning of others. And the last one is, well, the all includes many forms of the all, mineral kingdom, plant kingdom, animal kingdom, spirits, and otherwise, these are three diameters. So if I really want to grow, I need to be responsible for everything that happens around me as having some relationship to something inside me, inside that first ball. So whatever there is around me in nature, in life, and in the all, is in some form or another directly linked to that first ball. And by the way, that first ball is the capacity to feel my own heart. Now, in order to feel my own heart, it requires that I go through and experience the family tree, again, looking something like this, that I'm gradually on this journey of building a sincere desire to want to feel my own heart and be me. Now, the potential theoretical benefit is on the three girl month, if you will, the you know 11th month of the year, which is the second month of summer, it is the greenest, most abundant, food-filled, medicinally filled month, meaning literally the plant kingdom, all the veggie gardens are working, the fruit orchards are working. This is the most flourishing outer month. Okay. Now, theoretically, if I do that first month, well, I get more of that month. So every month, if I do one month, well, I get the next month better. 
So I'm still kind of stuck here. I'm still hour by hour trying to feel my own personal pain. At times, it's not easy, even to the point of tears, of feeling the history of both sides of my family consummated into the gene code held together by my father's mother. And I'm going to open this up and remove what's not healthy and leave the rest. That's the goal. Remove what's unhealthy and leave the healthy and then add back in more healthy. That's the theory anyway. So I'm just reporting to you, this is where I am, and I'm kind of stuck here. I may be here for a while until another week or 10 days when Three Girl opens, but I'm really wanting to get this six boy, one girl, one right, because this is when all of the men meet all of the women. All of the men meet all of the women. So starting on the first girl month, it's six months of just female. And as you know, whenever men and women get together, whether they're family or otherwise, whatever there's, well, I'll just report what I find. And right now it's just not entirely pretty. So my caveat to you is if you really wanna go on this journey there might be some sincere examination about why would you want to accept the responsibility to be yourself by going through the process of cleaning your family tree, building what's healthy. These are 12 different attributes of one's individual soul. But I am here to report it's working. Now, I'm not saying that I'm going to survive it, but I am saying that it's working. So I'll report to you again, at least by next month, about how I'm doing between the one and the three. But I urge you to really consider that you practice at least the protocol, because interesting enough, the protocol is really the combination of the first three grandmothers from the mother's side, they are the mechanisms that involve cleaning. They are the mechanisms that involve feeling. They also involve all the water in the body. Very significant thing to learn how to feel, clean, open up to one's higher guidance. That's what the protocol really does. Shoot, I can tell you this is just not easy for me. I'm optimistic. I'm truly optimistic that it has the benefits that I can see, but it's not easy. So stay tuned for next month and maybe it gets easier. Maybe you want to see if I live or die in the next six months. Um, Cause yeah, I, I understand you kind of want somebody to go through this and I'm honestly reporting about what my experiences are, and if you choose to do this, it's really just up to you. Okay, until next time, see you soon.